So you're wondering what the career progression is for a structural engineer. I'll be providing you with the roles and responsibilities at each stage, along with what you should be focusing on as well. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer based in Australia, and I provide videos to help progress your career faster, both technically and professionally, and just general engineering advice. So sit back, enjoy, have a coffee, and let's get into it. So you've just graduated as a structural engineer. Hopefully you've landed your graduate role. If not, look down below in the description. I've got my top five tips to help you land your first graduate position. Now, as you're moving out into the field, you'll soon realize you barely scratched the surface of structural knowledge. So what you need to do here is study structural mechanics throughout your whole career, as there's really a big breadth of knowledge that you need, but especially as a graduate, focusing on those structural mechanics and make sure you have a solid founding of structural engineering. I know you want to be moving on to those fancy FE softwares, moving on to those more complex designs, but this is really where a lot of graduates get tripped up. Because if you don't have that solid founding in structural mechanics, you have no idea if the answer the computer is spitting out are correct. As you can put garbage into that computer and it will give you an answer, but it could be completely wrong. So you need some way to assess whether the answers out of the computer are correct. So focusing on structural mechanics should be your top priority instead of moving on to those fancy softwares. Another area that potentially that is a problem is that you've only really designed single elements. You've only designed a column. You've only designed a slab. You've only designed a sheer wall. You haven't put in a whole context of a building. So getting an understanding of good building design. And unfortunately, with good design, this only comes with time. So what you should be focusing on is understanding everyone's considerations to apply them to the structure and also work out how to make something buildable. As this is not something you've been taught to this point. And this will just come with time. But it's something every time you're studying structural mechanics, is also trying to relate it back to good building design and how can we put it together? What are the considerations we need? So focusing on both structural mechanics and good building design is where you should be focusing on as a graduate. So you've moved past that graduate position in around four years. This stage lasts up to about seven years. Your roles and responsibilities have increased. You're, you're going to meetings potentially by yourself. You have... You're answering RFIs from builders. You're answering RFIs from architects. You're getting more of a whole building design as you've shown your worth as a graduate. Hopefully by now you're starting to feel comfortable with structural mechanics, but still keep up that study as there's still things you need to know. And by now you should realize that buildings is all about the drawings you're putting together as that's really where most of our value comes in. So this is really what you should be focusing on, improving your detailing skills as it's truly an art form and it's really hard to master. So making sure that you're detailing structures up that are simple that builders can understand. By now as well, hopefully trying to get some of those on-site experiences. It's important at this stage as well, as this will show you how a building goes together. So don't shy away from those potential site engineering roles, as being on-site every day will help you understand how a building goes together and the problems they have. So next time you're designing it, you'll better address that in your design prior to comes to the site, which makes it easier for the builder to build. At seven to 10 years experience, your roles and responsibilities are starting to expand. You're starting to mentor junior staff. You're starting to do project finances. So doing those costs to complete, doing those variations, making sure there is no scope creep and potentially doing fee proposals for new work. Also at this point, you're going to meetings by yourself. And pro tip, at those meetings, you do not need to agree to something necessarily. So if you do not have the answer, you're unsure, just say, we'll get back to you later. It doesn't hurt, as you do not want to be pushed into agreeing to something that you'll regret later. So what should you be focusing on at this point? You should be focusing on those communication skills, both written and verbal, as these really need to be a solid founding as a structural engineer. As you're dealing with different audiences, you need to make sure your advice is framed correctly to them. As how do you explain to someone that doesn't understand structural engineering the structural issues that you're having with that structure? Also, as you do not know the true issues that they're having as well. So if you explain to them, you're about to come together to come with a more holistic design solution. What you should also be doing when you're going to those design meetings is focusing on what everyone else is saying, making sure that you're listening to everyone so you have a fuller understanding of the issues that everyone else is having, as they may be having issues that you can easily solve. This also makes you a more holistic engineer. And if you can understand the problems they're having, you're about to incorporate these ideas into your future designs as this will make you a better engineer and make your designs easier for everyone that you're working with. The 15 years experience. This is where there's a distinct change in your roles and responsibilities as a structural engineer. Where you move out from working for someone and you are the top person on those projects. You're going to meetings, you're making those decisions. 
you're helping run those projects, doing the cost to complete, so making sure the variation's in, making sure this, there is no scope creep. You're looking after other staff that are on that project to make sure they're mentored properly. At this point, you should be focusing on your leadership skills at 10 to 15 years of experience, as that's something you've not done in the past. Now, at 15 plus years experience, this is where there's a fundamental shift. As the engineer splits off into a number of different streams you can potentially move for. Now, you need to be honest with yourself as you can potentially have 30 plus years experience beyond this point. So where do you want to be? Do you want to be client side? Do you want to be technical? Do you want to be leadership? Now, client side, what do you do? You need to be out there winning work, talking to clients, making sure the next job's coming in. Now, this is highly critical as if you don't have next jobs coming in, we do not have a business. Do you want to be technical? Are you making sure those standard details are up to date? Are you making sure our technical guides are correct? Are you taking those more complex designs and running with them? Is that something that you find really encouraging? If it is, leap for the technical side as well, as this is still highly critical, because if we don't have those technical skills, again, we're not engineers, are we? And how about leadership? Did you like running those teams? Did you like looking at the bigger picture as a structural engineer? Did you like seeing those bigger pictures of where you're going? That's where you might move into those leadership skills, as if we do not have a vision and a correct leader, we do not have a company. So we have three streams that are highly critical that you could potentially move into. Now, yes, it is a bit of a blurred line and people do move in between them, but each of these streams, most people will fall into one part of these streams would be the main part of their work. So what did you think? Do you have any other comments about potential ways and roles and responsibilities that engineers have? Where are you currently in your career? Please comment below as this will help guide me of where to put my next episodes. Anyway, if you did like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, have a coffee, and look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Not just tuning out when it's not your turn to talk, as from this, you'll be able to realize that the computer turns off and the screen goes off.